Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely afternoon. Today, I'd like to talk about the difference between last year and this year in trying to get wheelchair right to repair passed in Colorado. As I've said on this channel many times, right to repair is not just about fixing cell phones and laptops and everything else, it's just about everywhere. Let me just regale you with just a couple of stories that were told last year at this hearing. There was one person who uh, had called on Christmas Eve about getting their wheelchair fixed, and on January 17th, somebody said that they'd be on their way. Another person needed surgery over sores from using a chair without trunk support and hip alignment and could not get that installed after their wheelchair was damaged by an airport. One had a flat tire and they wanted to charge $300 for a wheel replacement and that's, gets better, six to eight weeks. It took them four weeks to install the tubes after and they bought the tubes for about 20 bucks on eBay. Another person was charged $500 for a button to power the wheelchair, which you can get on eBay for 20 bucks. And again, this is not like some sort of Apple product where you got 80 layers of glue and you're gonna plague something that's really crazy expensive if you try to get in and you just do the wrong thing. No, it's literally like you unplug it and you plug it in. These are just some of the experiences and I will link you down below to a list of the testimony and experiences from people that had issues with their wheelchairs. Last year, here's how that committee went. I'm gonna read a comment from a subscriber on YouTube. Colorado resident, that committee infuriated me. They began with jokes about how they had to sit through this bill again, only asked for clarification from lobbyists, refused to address any information contradicting lobbyists. The closing statements had me wondering if the virtual attendees were even at their screen paying attention. Statements about questions or concerns which had been addressed in the hearing already. And this is something that really bothered a lot of people is that they had, uh, they said, you know, there's a lot of concerns. We have a lot of questions. We have a lot of concerns. And the issue is that in spite of all the concerns that they said they had, they did not ask any questions of the, you know, dozens of people that showed up to answer the questions that they had. One of the things that's infuriating about these hearings is that you'll show up, you'll speak for one or two minutes and that's it. That's all the speaking you get to do when your time is up it's done. And somebody could be standing up there saying, you know, well, gee, I can't pass this. I can't vote on this bill because of X. And you'll know that X is not true. And you'll have the evidence right there in your hand and you can't do anything. It is absolutely infuriating. And the bill pretty much went nowhere as a result of that. Things were quite differently this year. This year, this bill went way further. This year, wheelchair right to repair bill uh, through the Colorado Senate was voted on 30 to 5 in favor. Now it just has to go through the House. But in the Senate, 30 to 5 in favor. Massive difference from what we had last year. What's changed since then? Well, we have grassroots advocacy and education going on in that area now. We were also able to afford to hire a lobbyist in that state to go over the opposition arguments and point out why they're false line by line to every single politician that those opposition lobbyists ran to. And it actually worked. That's something that we would have never been able to do without all of you. Because the money to pay that lobbyist came from you. The money for that type of grassroots education and grassroots advocacy work came, a lot of that came from that one donor to the C3 that just gave a million dollars and said, keep doing what you're doing. This is not stuff that we would have been able to do before. See, so one of the things that I sought out to do with the money that we raised is remember all the people dating back to 2015 that actually showed up to these legislative hearings, that really understood what was going on, that were actually taking the time to speak to politicians and change their mind in tangible ways. Who were doing the best possible work and did they have the resources to? And then getting those people that were doing the best possible work, that were always there in the trenches, the resources to be able to do what they were doing. And that's what we've been doing over the past year. And uh, the Nathan Proctor at US Per, Kevin O'Reilly, and uh, all those people have been doing amazing, amazing work here. I'll leave links to their stuff down below and some of their articles on this. But what I really wanted to do is come up here and thank all of you because somebody is likely going to be able to enjoy Christmas with their family and actually be able to get around rather than wait until January 17th to be able to be mobile again because of you. Somebody may be able to avoid having a surgery for sores because their wheelchair, it doesn't have what is needed for them because they'll be able to choose who fixes their wheelchair, which they're not able to do right now because of you. Somebody may not have to pay $500 to get a power button fixed so that they could turn the damn thing on because of all of you. I wanted to say thank you for that. And as much as I come up here and I sometimes black pill you with all the bad news and all the sadness and all the losses and all the fails and all the LO, you know, all the Charlie Browns and everything else, I think it's important that we come up here and celebrate our victories. At the end of the day, let's be real, 
They're kind of your victories. Because if you weren't out there every single day informing your friends and your family members and your coworkers and your kids and everybody else about how important this is or just getting them involved or excited in some way, shape, or form, none of this would actually happen. The reason this is actually happening, the reason that an executive order can be on Biden's desk over right to repair, the reason that this stuff makes the news or makes it to the front page of Reddit every day, the reason that there are people out there that will send me money to be able to actually advocate on behalf of this in a manner where we can actually get things done and beat opposition lobbyists at their own game is because of all of you. So thank you. And I really do hope that you just take even just a minute or two, just bask in this little bit of a victory. Regardless of how much effort you put in, whether you're someone that just upvoted a Reddit post on Right to Repair, you're somebody that gave 50 cents to this nonprofit that I have that I'll link to down below, or you're somebody that just told your neighbor about why this matters when they were complaining about the inability to get a part to something that they used to be able to get a part to it so that they could understand what was going on. You helped somebody get closer to their ability to not be screwed over for one or two or three months at a time because they had a flat tire on their wheelchair. You allowed somebody who was disabled to go back to living a more normal life faster. And this is not something that benefits me directly. Obviously, again, consumer electronics right to repair benefits my repair shop. That's what I do for a living. I don't have any experience with wheelchairs in spite of my horrible deadlifting technique as of recently. But I, at the end of the day, showing that right to repair can be accomplished in some section of the medical industry and that the sky does not fall, the world does not end, wheelchairs do not go on fire and start accelerating at 80 miles an hour into the road and killing people, goes a long way towards rebuilding the culture of repairability that we used to have in the United States that we don't have now. When it passes in one area, it's going to be easier to make the argument to pass it in other areas. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. And thank you very much for being a part of this achievement and helping us accomplish something. And I hope that this makes it through the house in Colorado. And uh, I ho hope it passes. See you next video. Bye now.